PKA AMA is that the Patreons sent in, or the patrons, Patreons, whatever. I patrons they both. The patrons. patrons. Yeah. These cool people. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what do you want to read it? You seem to be the designated. I was just going to propose it to you. Uh, rock, paper, scissors for it? Uh, I will just. I'll just do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, this one sent in Called My Girlfriend Fat. I guess that's the title. So, long story short, me and my girlfriend got into a big fight about something unrelated to her weight. We ended up getting over it, but the next day she sat me down and said she wanted to talk. Always fun. So we talked out some things. Then she asked me why we don't have sex as much as we used to. We've been together about two years. Then I told her it's because she's put on some weight in the past year. Well, that was a huge mistake. (laughs) (laughs) That uh, That was about a week ago. We have fought pretty much every day since then, and she keeps saying she is going to leave, that she can't be with someone that doesn't like all of her. So I told her that I didn't mean it, and it doesn't matter. But in reality, it kind of does. Yeah, no shit, dude. Uh, what should I do? Just sh- Should I stay with her and let her get fat? <laughs> Fatter, apparently. Or yeah. should I tell her it bugs me, you already did, and let her make the decision for herself? Her mom is bigger, so she, so she bigger says there's no way. Yeah, <laughs> bigger than her. So, so it's only trending you? up. Yeah. <laughs> her mom is bigger. <laughs> Uh, I hate that euphemism, bigger. It's like, no, she's just fatter. Like, so bigger than a... Her mom than, is than a, bigger still. Yeah, how long could you live off her in an apocalypse scenario? Could she fit in a canoe? Yeah, could she fit <laughs> in a canoe? Could she row a boat? Could we go <laughs> canoeing together? Uh, her mom is bigger, so she says there's no way that she will be able to lose the weight because it runs in the... No one runs in her family. Mm. Uh, and she's also bipolar, so it's kind of hard to talk about things that could possibly make her mad. Anyways, yeah, you want to trigger her. That is all. Yeah, you don't want to trigger her. Oh, my God. Bring home some Dunkin' Donuts. I got so much fucking Tumblr in this post. Please, Kyle. Oh, oh, right? All right. So, first of all, (laughs) you're not the asshole. She asked you a question, and you gave her an honest answer. Maybe you should ask her, like, would you prefer that I lied to you? Or would you prefer that I was just a different person? Because I'm not going to change. That's that's just who I am. You, you asked me for my, my opinion, and I gave it to you. You asked me why I wasn't fucking you. It's because you've gained weight. We should see other people. And just get it over with. Get rid of that one. You don't want the fat, crazy chick. Like, like that's not how it works. It goes like this. In the top tier, you've got hot chicks who aren't crazy. Just below that, you've got hot chicks who are crazy. Way the fuck the down here. System. This is the world system. Way the fuck <laughs> down here. You got fat chicks who are crazy. Okay, you don't need that. That's a double. That's a that's double. That's unacceptable. Method. Fuck uh-uh. that girl, uh-uh. but not literally. No, no yeah, see, you the can't. problem here. You can tell that by the way he phrased it. Like if it was just a little thing, and he was like, "Oh, she's put on, you know, nine pounds or you know, twenty pounds recently." Like he would have said that to make it downplay a little bit. The fact that he says she's gotten bigger recently means that this is a behemoth of a change. Very quickly, <laughs> like just. He said she put uh, on some weight in the past year. You can, if She's you put your mind to it, on. you can pack a lot on in a year. <laughs> All right, like, so, so it's like this. It's if she's not going to gain the, if she's not going to, it doesn't sound like she has any plans to lose this weight. It sounds like she has uh, accepted this weight as part of her, she's like a the, that victim that whole, of her genetics. Yeah. Yeah, she's that whole bit about you not being able to love all of her or whatever. She's Nonsense. right. You can't. You can't love all of her, and that that's the that's the deal breaker right there. Like like, there's no reason to think about this anymore. Be like, yeah, you're right. I can't love all of you. That that 45 pounds of fat just isn't something that turns me on. I I don't want it in my life. I want to live to. I want to live a long time. I want to live a healthy lifestyle. That's important to me. It's also important that my children are healthy and they live a healthy lifestyle and I don't think I can accomplish any of those long term life goals with you, Miss Piggy. Yeah. Well, how about and he brings a little yeah. and then like how about know, he really brings a crack it. pipe and then demands that she love all of him. Sure I like crack <laughs> now and then or all the time, but that's just a part of me. I just <laughs> love crack. Uh, I don't have meanest thing. Um I don't know. I guess I made fun of that girl in school that had the cane and all, but not to her face. Um, and it doesn't even count. Well, I did, I did do sort of like replicate her walk with an imaginary cane behind her. Yes, and I referred to her as Cane Girl, but not to her face because I still don't know her name. <laughs> One time, I beat up a guy over nothing. It felt 
piece Somehow of shit. Not chivalrous. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like 14 or 15. <laughs> I love how like mine was so horrible. Nobody said anything. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do? I didn't think oh, it was that this. horrible. <laughs> You're like you made fun of Kane girl. I know her. Yeah, <laughs> good old Kane girl. You know what I did that I still feel bad about? So there was this girl in my high school, and she was a lesbian. Now I just to set the scene. I think that was less accepted when I was in high school than it is now. Now it seems like everybody's pansexual, transsexual, asexual, gay. It doesn't like like there's a whole spectrum. They don't even agree on gender. Something anymore. cool and trendy. Even gender's a spectrum. You know, mm -hmm. I'm mostly boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but back in the '90s, this girl was gay, and she didn't change with the uh, the other girls at gym class and stuff like that, and. And she was out and she had like, she, I guess she was, she's pretty, but not any kind of knockout or anything. She was just a, a normal looking in shapeish girl. And uh, um, she didn't have any friends. She was kind of ostracized. So I was nice to her. And then because that happened, she latched onto me hard. Like, you know, it, we just pass in the hallways and it was like, Woody, how are you? And, um... At first, I'm like, good, you, and it, but after a while, it was like, she was a social pariah because of this gay thing. Like, it, you know, it, it wasn't working for her back in the day in my high school. And I turned off the charm strong enough so that she would stop latching mm. on to me. And uh, that wasn't, the, the me of today wouldn't have gone that route. You know, fuck everyone. I don't care. I'll be your friend. But, uh, uh, it, it still feels like one of the meaner things I've done. Like I was trying to be nice and then she latched on so tight. I felt like we couldn't just be like casually nice. We had to like, like she wanted hugs in the hallways and stuff. And, and it was like, nah, can't have that. You're going to have to back off. And the way to get her to back off was to cold shoulder her enough that she stopped. <sighs> well, that's, you know, I mean, if that's on the, how old were you? <sighs> Sophomore, junior. I mean, hey, if I can make fun of that cane girl, I mean, why can't you do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. At least you were being passively kind of shitty, not actively seeking out a handicapped person. To <laughs> I guess so. I, guess I mean, she walked past me every day. Really, she was Not very fast. You had plenty of time to think <laughs> of jokes. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Maybe that, that was part of it. That, that is true. She, she really did sort of linger there in the corridor. <laughs> linger. Yeah, when's the last time you got hit in the balls? Uh, oh, oh. It, it's been happening too much. I have um, <laughs> I have a puppy Great Dane that wags his tail furiously, and he's just at the right height. Uh, I bet it happens twice a week. Huh. Uh, I, I used to play this game. It was real bad. I can. I used to play this game, um, and we we stole the game from some other friends of, of Kitty and mine. Uh, it's great, terrible grammar, but what these guys do, these brothers, they. The, the rule is this. You can hit the other guy in the dick as long as it's recorded. Because at the end of all this, you make a montage of a year's worth of cock slaps. A and so like, they would find interesting, creative ways to do it, of course, but it has to be recorded. So you've got to get a buddy to film it, a hidden camera, whatever. And that's the game. And what they a terrible, this game. fearful life to lead. You it's don't want to go out. These, it, it's these two brothers. They, they, you know, they're grown-ass men with, like, successful uh careers and pretty wealthy guys but like they still play this cock slapping game to this day and and that's the rule if it's on if it's recorded you get to do it so um you know i me and my friends took up that game for a short period of time at one point and god damn like you you learn to just not enjoy that quickly it doesn't take it the first time someone blindsides you by like hitting you in the dick with a broomstick you're like well fuck this game I yeah, don't who wins that game? <laughs> no, who wins? The viewers, I guess, of the of the like the montage, because like, they show us the montage of them getting hit like literally eighty times in the dick over the course of a year, and like every and it's real, you know, it's not like a movie like nut shot. It's like it's, you know, grown men falling in public places and lobbies and hotels and restaurants. They don't care where it is. So it was pretty. It was pretty hilarious. That's so stupid. But yeah, that was the last time I got hit in the dick uh, or in the balls. Like, like really good. Like, actually struck on purpose rather than, I don't know, dropping something on my lap. Like, about, a, about two years ago, I guess. I have another yeah. one where I'm awful. 
So I'm in college, right? And uh, people know my life story. So to fast forward up to this point, I lived in the dorms. We threw jelly down the stairs. I got thrown out of the dorms. I had to find a place to live off campus. And I stayed in this bedroom in a house. And uh, this, this, I guess, young woman, young to me now, she was like 24. So she was like the grown up, owned a place, but she rented it out to college kids, like different bedrooms to help her pay the mortgage. So there were two of us there, me and this other guy. I don't remember his name, which you'll hear. So uh, this other guy was weird. He, uh, he had like this really strong social anxiety and he was thin, but he was ugly. Like to the point where not deformed, but like he just wasn't proportioned right in the face. He like may stop have. you in the streets ugly. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus, that's an ugly person. I, I, I wonder if he had an identifiable um, like disorder, like, you know, like, I don't know. There's some sort of like, oh, yeah, that's Jason X syndrome. It gives you like large ears and kind of a a, 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 a prolonged jaw or something like, you know, like he just he, he didn't. If you looked at him, you'd think like, like, oh, that's a, a weird face. It's not Down syndrome, but it is a thing that you just don't see all the time. So he was ugly. And uh, he would sometimes have like panic attacks if he stood in a crowd, like at the student center with just all the people sort of buzzing up and downstairs. He just would freak him out. And uh, he had great grades. He had a 4.0, but he was really struggling to, to just get by in, in school. This is college. And at first I was like, oh, yeah, you know, like I'm going to teach this guy how to get by socially. Like I'm going to be you know, whatever. And I even like took him out. And we played Frisbee in the street together. You know, just like you got to get outside. Yes, you know, we're, we're playing Frisbee. He was so fucking god awful at Frisbee that I instantly regretted it. Like I'm throwing it to him and it's floating and he can't catch it. And he throws it to me and it's like like I'm a dog playing fetch like off to the side don't worry over there running and picking up the frisbee and it, it was terrible sound nice so far when does this turn so then the suicide attempts start and um you know like like he's doing fucked up shit like his um his door not good for a renter especially but it had all these glass panes on it and he broke one he threw a ball through it and it's like dude you all right like breaking your door and uh He's, you know, he's like, I was just going to get the glass and, you know, do something. And uh, I'm like, you're not going to, right? And he'd talk him down. Another time, he's taking like a, a plastic first aid kit about this large. You've probably seen things like that. And he's slamming it on the mirror in the bathroom. And you hear it because it's loud. He's just banging the mirror, banging the I mirror. I don't like this guy. This guy wants attention. And uh, I go over and I'm like, you know, what are you doing with that? And he was, he's, he explains that he was hoping that... Uh, um, the, the mirror would break and then the glass would somehow cut him in a way that he would die. So these are like half-hearted suicide. Yeah. Not even that, attention. like, 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 yeah. like a fifth hearted or something. That's, that's, yeah. I mean, that's retarded what he and was doing. There. Really? He was making a ruckus <laughs> <laughs> and they're wearing me out. Like I started wanting to help this guy and now he's an annoyance for me. And, uh, uh, it was one night that I like the, I went over to his place and he was like sleeping on the floor or something. And uh, he's got like pills scattered about and such. And he ate them. He ate a bunch of pills. And uh, I call 911 and the, um, like, you know, the ambulance comes and the emergency crew's there. And he calls his mom and he's like, Mom, it's over now. I'm done. I'm going to die. I'm just calling you to say goodbye. I've already taken the pills and uh, I can't take it anymore. And, um, I talked to the ambulance guys and then they're like, well, but this doesn't kill you. <laughs> you know, it's like he's taking an overdose of like penicillin or something. He took 71 a day men's <laughs> <laughs> three months. <laughs> Am I going to die? Well, no, but your, your hair and fingernails are going to be spectacular. Son. <laughs> yeah. Fucking now. That's a lot of niacin you down. Am I going to die? B12 no, off the charts. But the gonorrhea is cleared up for good. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, that's a lot of penicillin you just down. That is really sad. So when does this... Uh, does it get well, it's just that I stopped giving a shit entirely. Like, like even when I called 911, it was an annoyance that I had to put up with this guy. Yeah. And that, you know, like, oh, I'm taking time out of my day to get the paramedics here. 
And um, he left for a while. He was gone for like three or four weeks. And then he came back and um, I don't know, maybe the semester ended. Like I didn't really keep up with him. I just stopped giving a fuck about him yeah, entirely. I, and I know. He's constant problems. I, I've known people like that. After a while, it's like you stop taking them seriously and you start taking their threats seriously because they're not serious in some cases. And it's a really, it's really risky ground to be on. It's really thin ice because all too often someone has those threats and then, you know, Monday comes around, Fred's not at work and, you know, Fred's dead. Fred killed himself or whatever. And like, oh, he always talked about it, but he never did. But this guy, like, like, like Taylor said, like, he's just causing a ruckus. <laughs> like, like, he's throwing a piece of plastic, a plastic baggie, essentially, against a, 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 a mirror and, and his thought process is, well, you never know. Maybe it'll shatter, and then the glass will jump at me just so, and it'll, like, slip my jugular, and then I'll bleed out right here. Like, if he wants to bleed out, if he wanted to die, like, like how hard's a knife to, but, to acquire? But being me, like, okay, these are cries for help, right? And at first, that cry was something that I was willing to, like, engage in and help him with. And after a while, that cry became, dude, can you just fucking cry quietly? I ain't got time for your shit. Because I didn't like him. You know, and I could see why the world didn't like him and why he had so much difficulty making friends and why he was so alone in this earth. Because he was ugly and he was, um, like, an, I don't know, annoying and uninteresting. Mm. I got a really good one. I, uh, when I, like, five years ago, was walking through a grocery store, and this elderly woman was offering bagel bites. Mm. And she had just finished one batch, was turning around to get the next sleeve out, and I, I took all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I left. Didn't buy any bagel bites, but I, <laughs> I took, like, nine. Yeah, bucks. nine! <laughs> <laughs> and so I just—I didn't stick around, but I could just picture her turning around like, "Oh, someone wants to try my bagel bites," and then, <laughs> "Oh, Jesus! <laughs> like, <laughs> where have they gone? <laughs> Where's that nice young man?" But uh, <laughs> that I can't think of anything like truly awful. Like maybe I've repressed it because I have have to have done something really, really genuinely mean. Um. I was driving the car one time when my cousin threw a barbecue, a, 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 McDon a packet of McDonald's barbecue sauce and hit this guy who was riding a bicycle with it. He was wearing this big poofy white coat that my cousin felt was offensive to him anyway. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so we singled him out. And uh, we had just, we, we, we would go to McDonald's and get like a 50 piece McNugget, which they do. And uh, we'd eat, the, we'd split it, and so they give you like an, uh, all the sauce you want. They literally give us a bag of sauce, and so we had all this extra sauce, and we sauced that guy. Um, he was uh, he was dressed funny, um, <laughs> and, uh, and and we we took it, we we didn't like that, so we went and sauced him. That was pretty mean. I've got this for Kyle. I'm sure, he had to go home with his sauced up white poofy jacket. It was one of those big poofy white like Tommy jackets or something. Got him. Good. Oh, is this you person? This Did you crazy. kill a migrant? Like, what's this wind up here? What'd you do? And uh, so I needed to buy a um, a nail gun. Uh, I'm, I was I thought I was going to be nailing down felt paper. It goes like on top of uh, uh, sheathing. So if you don't know, you have a roof, right? You've probably all seen roof. The things that go across and like are, are rafters. And then there's plywood that goes on top of those rafters and they're nailed in. That's called sheathing. And then goes tar paper and then goes shingles. Well, that tar paper is held in place. And one of the things that people use to hold it in place is a roofing nail gun. And uh, they're just like regular nails, except the head on it is big, round, and fat. And, uh, and that's so that it doesn't like go too deep or break it. or like You don't over-puncture with a roofing nail gun, really. It kind of lays and holds it. And you can use it to hold tar paper. Anyway, hmm. I need to buy one. I don't have one now. I've never installed the roof before. Uh, did you get gay? No, I, I'm yeah. wondering why, why you don't get a fucking hammer. I, I have a hammer, but the thing is, we're doing about 3,000 square feet of roof now and about 2,500 square feet of roof on the next shop, and the thing's like 200 bucks. Now, having used the framing thing, like I probably drove 700 nails today. Like we're busy, like, you know, and, and it's like, you know, I'll, I'll get in a spot and I drive. 70 nails like in a little session like i'll measure it out and drive 70 nails yeah. um 
it's it's a big job and we don't have like habitat for humanity like hordes of people all doing it together it it's it's mostly me she just doesn't like to be on the roof so i do it and uh it helps to have automated tools so anyway i was gonna buy it i go up to a guy at home depot and i'm like i need to you know buy this thing we're gonna nail in felt paper then after that shingles and i need a guy who's an expert and he's like ah oh, you want matthews so okay we go by we find him and uh, I'm like, Matthews, I'm going to pick out a nail gun, and I need nails. Uh, I need an expert to help guide me through this. Are you that guy? And he's like, yeah, sure. And, oh, my God, he was not that guy. He was not an expert at all. You know? like it, So the sheathing's half an inch thick, and I'm going to nail paper into it, essentially. So I don't want, like, two-inch long nails to nail paper into a half inch thing. You're just going to have a ton of nails sticking out the bottom. Um, and they're going to, they're going to hurt someone sometime. Not that you spend a lot of time touching a roof, but I'm like tons of nails sticking out. It looks shitty. So I'm like, you know, can we get a half inch nail just to hold the tar paper and maybe something longer for the shingles, etc. And he's looking around. He doesn't know what he sells. He doesn't know how long the nails are or what length nails people customarily use and i'm asking him like which nailer i should use you know is one more hobbyist and one more pro like they were all within like 30 dollars, so i just get the better one you know when the prices are that close and uh he's like well this one here is a uh, porter cable and this one's dewalt and he starts like <laughs> reading the labels to me and and it, it's clear to me that he doesn't know like what these are used for or anything and uh, he starts like stumbling on his own words. And I got a little, I'm like, are you trying to say something? And, uh, you know, then he just like starts reading like this one here is 199 and this one here is 219. And it's like fucking no shit. They're, like I turn those people away. I've done this multiple times. It, whether I'm, it's, it's, it hasn't been with something like that. But if I'm buying like lumber or, or, or something specific when I need an expert, I'll, and, and, you know, the guy will come by and I'll, I'll ask him a very specific question. And I run into this in my day to day life. I don't like it. I want a yes or no fucking answer. I, I'll ask a question like, hey, do you know if I need 11 penny nails or, or, or what for this? Will this gun shoot 11 penny nails? If they don't say yes or no or that one won't, but the Porter cable will, then you're fucking done. That's it right <laughs> then and there. I'll be at my house and I'll ask Kitty or somebody a question. I'll be like, hey, do you know where my wallet is? And she'll start looking. Don't fucking start looking. I wanted to know if you knew. So if they if they don't if they don't have that information up here ready to roll, I, I'll always say, "No, thank you. I, I thought you knew," and I'll just walk away. That would have been the great line, I think, for me to use. Uh, instead, like I was, I, I didn't say it great. You know, like it. At first, like I'm giving him a little time to collect his thoughts, right? Maybe he knows what yeah, he's when doing. When did you get shitty? Because you haven't been an <laughs> asshole yet, and I know this is coming. Oh but. yeah, uh, when did you spit on him? <laughs> so like at first, I'm giving him a chance to sort of look, right? And mm -hmm. he's like, you know, well these things here, and he grabs a fucking like five thousand screws, and I'm like, well, well that doesn't even go in a nail gun. Those are screws. It's like, oh. Yeah, that's right. And he puts them back. Like, <laughs> like what? Yeah, they're fucking screws. You fucking <laughs> fuck. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? We're buying nail gun. You don't use screws to hold in paper. You dumb fucking fuck. And so, but this is all happening in my head. That's not how the conversation went. I and, hope but not. I Surprisingly, did, I did kind of say like, "But those are screws." And he's, "Oh yeah," and he puts them away. And ah, I get and, them confused sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then you know he's going on, and he's he's basically just telling me what I've already found. Like I didn't go straight to help. I had already looked at the stock. And yeah, just, yeah. And, you exactly. know, this is where I'm confused. And um, uh, so yeah, but then he starts reading labels to me, and I'm like, "All right, all right. Well, thanks for your help." Like that, right? That's my dismissal. And um, he keeps talking, and I'm like, are you trying to tell me something? Like, are you trying to say something? I'm almost giving him a second chance in my head. Although Chiz has walked off to the shopping cart and started covering his mouth. Take it. Yeah. You can't take it. Now, now Wait, so what did you actually say? Did you say, that are you I, trying I, to tell me something? Are you trying to say something? <laughs> he's, say it in the same way you said it. The best it, was, it was a little annoyed, but I'll go with, are you trying to say something like 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 that? And um, it, 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 a little douchey, a little douchey, a little douchey. <laughs> a little douchey. Well, I, and um, 
uh, and, and, and I should note, it turned out that Chiz, I, he was on a mission for a little uh, metal bracket that holds the sheathing together. Like, if it's not on a stud together, it has a tendency to do that. And this is a bracket that holds them together. Anyway, we couldn't find them. So I was like, I'll tell you what, I'll go to Nail Guns, do my thing. You go to whatever it takes to get it done to find that part. And um, the same guy helped Chiz. So Chiz knew. Like the second that he I, that I brought him back as our helper, that this guy was shit. He was <laughs> fucking awful. So he, like he went on a tour of the whole fucking Home Depot together. Like they're just walking around looking like, oh, it's not in this aisle here, and not this aisle either. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> like we don't need any of the aisles that it's not. We need another. Remember aisles. the other day when I asked the guy for tape, and he was like, he goes, "What kind of tape? We're at Walmart, and and uh-huh. I need I need tape." I'm like I'm like hi. Where's the uh, where's the I, at first I asked I, I think I asked where's the medical tape and he's like I looked really confused and I was like no, no, no I'm sorry I'm butchering this but I said where's the tape and he goes well what kind of tape and I was like 3M medical tape and he was like oh I thought well, you were gonna say duct <laughs> I thought you were gonna say an, I thought it was a question I knew the answer to but. But just walk with me. Let's and I was just like, no, I'll find it. Like, like you know, th- th- I think afterwards he was like, well, I don't know. And you're like, well, any tape. And he goes, well, I don't know that either. Well, why? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's how what? It's like, can I have tape? Well, what kind of tape? This kind. I don't know where that is. Well, then any kind. I also don't know where any kind is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know where any fucking tape is. That's the I worst to- thing ever. When you ask for like a specific thing. This happened the other day at a place where it was like, uh, do you know where the molasses is? Molasses. Uh, Cheryl. Shay Cheryl. Do you know where it is? And then it's like two employees somewhere yelling to each other about your problem in front of all these other customers who are like, look at this dumb fuck, couldn't find something. Now he has to make everybody else listen to it. And then they come on an adventure with you, <laughs> trying to talk the whole time. Like, oh, what do you need this for? Just, just don't talk to me, lady. Just... Just tell me you don't know, and I'll continue this painful process on my own. But don't, don't join my escapade now, trying to be a part of it, because you don't want to be on cashier duty for five minutes. <laughs> like, bitch. I can be this... very polite under crazy, uh, under unusual scenarios. I was buying block the other day, and I was buying, like, 58-inch cinder block. Con- cinder block. Okay. Yeah, and I went straight to the source. I went to the concrete factory where they make the fucking concrete. Mm, okay. And uh, and they were. T- it took them 20 minutes to ring this concrete up. And at the end of it, like, the thing was, like... $34.17 or something like that, and I had $35, and I had literally stood there for 20 minutes over 83 cents worth of change, but I didn't feel like anyone there was an idiot or didn't know what they were doing. They explained why things were taking a long time. I felt like I was dealing with professionals. They even loaded the blocks for me while I waited, but those motherfuckers at Home Depot don't know what the hell they're doing at any time like i am not an expert i'm not i'm just not i i I've, I've worked a lot of projects from electrical to plumbing to to carpentry and stuff but i'm not an expert at any of them i just know which tools do what and how to use them most of the time i still might electrocute myself or cause a leak mm. but i'll usually get the job done these motherfuckers sometimes act like they've never worked on anything like, like, they couldn't wire up an electrical socket. Like, if the bulb broke, they, they'd electrocute <laughs> themselves and die or something. They don't know what tar paper is. Uh, every time, and, and I hate to stereotype women, but oftentimes, if I, if I ask a woman, she really doesn't know. And, and I'm going to say this. If I was a woman working in that field, I'd be the fucking, I'd be the one. I'd be the one that when, the guy, when you were like, sir, can I help you in anything? The guy rolls his eyes. Well, I'm looking for a nail gun that shoots 11 penny nails. I'd be like, well, you want the Porter Cable CR5? That or the DeWalt if you like the warranty better. It's got the three-year warranty, and you can shoot brads. Like, like I'd fucking <laughs> know, and that guy would fucking be impressed when he talked to me. That's one of the but, things the guy did. He was like, well... This one here's got the lifetime warranty. Pointing <laughs> to the big fucking lifetime warranty. Yeah, no shit. I re- like there is on on nail guns, there is about four minutes of reading material. You know, like the different features, the prices, and the warranties. I covered that before I asked for help. That everything he said and did was a waste of my time. And that, like not just that, but like I didn't really want him on my adventure. So by bringing him, 
it was kind of like a concession, <laughs> like, all right, you know, I don't really want help, but if I, I need some, so I'm going to ask her for expert advice. And that fucker it, it was worthless. And uh, I have to start very uh, honest to, to all people in my life, whether I've known them for five minutes or five years, and I'll just, I'll figure out how to say it in my head, but I'll usually calmly just say it. Like, if, I, if, they're, if I'm done with them, like it happened the other night, I, I won't be too specific so that this person doesn't get their feelings hurt, but I was working, and someone was just watching me work. And I was working, working frantically. I was on a time, there were time constraints. I was working with stuff I'm not all that familiar with. And this person was just watching me, like, oh, you're doing this? Yeah, I'm doing that. You gonna do it like this? Yeah, I'm gonna do it like that. I'd appreciate it if you, if you left me alone now, so I can get back to my work. I think that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna talk to him about. And I'm I'm from I've done a lot of research in the past about this, so I'm familiar with the the gynoplasty, you know, the bitch tits and the the back knee, and um um the uh, the, the the hair loss, which is the biggest one that, w that would concern me. But I believe that as long as you're not doing a, a massive dose, and as long as you uh, after stack or cycle or whatever you call it you you go on to some st you go on to some other drugs to to balance your estrogen testosterone levels and make sure they, they don't get way out of whack cuz you know your body stops producing testosterone when you're on it yourself that's why your testicles shrink temporarily and i think there's a lot to i think there's could be some gains there i think that would be fun My to, to oh, i'm sorry I, I thought there was a gap please carry on no i i think that would be cool i i would like to try that under the, under the supervision of a doctor and no. and see just how sure you need too to, risky, dude. Woody and I watched this video. Oh my <laughs> god, it was on PKN. I don't know if we want to rewatch it, but I, I <sighs> the before and after he went from a guy who works out a few days a week and, and like he has was big, strong but flabby, wide, sho wide shoulders, not a lot of definition, but a lot of bulk. He went from that and kind of baby face. There was so, there was enough fat on him that he kind of had a, a poofy face in one year. <laughs> like the guy, with the, the guy with the camera goes, God damn! <laughs> it's just like he came out the same machine as Captain America! <laughs> he just did 10 years of gains in one year! Legitimately, he comes out looking better than Captain America. Mm -hmm. like, like Chris Evans wishes he looked like this dude. This dude is ripped, uh, like, like super low fat content incredible definition and and his physique is just he's a bodybuilder and he looks like a, a good one at that like like he's not like just a real ripped guy he's like oh yeah that guy could probably win some sort of bodybuilding competition like each muscle group is just perfect oh. his back looked freakish the, he's too big much bigger than i'd want to get bigger than i want to get to the aspect of steroids that scares me the most there's two of them one is the coming off of it right like your body starts producing its own tea and you you know, like all of a sudden you're, you're less than you were before. Like it, if it was do steroids and then phase off them and kind of try to keep where you were naturally, that'd be one thing. But no, you do steroids, you come off them and you turn into the prepubescent old version of you. I don't want that. That sounds terrible. The other that's aspect. Why, that's why the doctor there to be, to be giving yeah. you drugs to counteract that. The other aspect of it is. I worry that I'll have like mood swings or aggression. Like it, when I was, um, I was a college swimmer and um, no, I don't think anyone on the swim team did steroids, but just hanging out in like the athlete circles, the football players did do steroids. And those guys would like lock in a room and roid rage and it'd be all trash like a rock star's hotel room and shit afterwards. They'd get into like fights with each other and it was a roid thing. Everyone knew it was a roid thing. That guy does roids and he can't control his temper. I don't want, like, I'm a dad, right? You know, like, it, I don't want, like, a like if hope gets moody or something, for me to respond inappropriately, you know? I, yeah, th I think the time is, like, y the time is past. Like, your steroid <laughs> window has closed. No, like, this is when it opens, man. Like, it, <laughs> this is, this oh, is when, when you hook you up with a stack. You're going to be, you're going to be ridiculous. Yeah. Would you if I had a... If I had a doctor say that it was okay and he would like a really low dose and it's like you just keep working out like normal and in like eight months you're gonna be like thirty leaps pounds and bounds better. And I can guarantee you won't have really bad, awful side effects. But other than that, like if there's even a risk at all, like, well yeah, maybe you you're they could permanently make your hormones out of whack. You might have really high estro estrogen afterward and be weeping like a meat loaf in fucking fight club. Uh, at the very end of this, so then just, if that's the case, just get some whey powder and creatine and go to the gym. Like it's not worth. Mm. 
the payoff is not worth the risk. But it, so <laughs> as a as an MMA fan, um, TRT testosterone replacement therapy was legal up until like I want to say a year and a half, two years ago. So you were seeing all these fighters in their late thirties at like the top of their game, career resurgence, Dan Henderson, Chael Sonnen, Vitor Belfort. These guys were the best in the world at like 35, 38. That you take all the experience and wisdom and expertise and like ring craft that someone gathers over a lifetime of fighting added with the testosterone and athleticism of an 18 year old and you have these like superhuman fighters and like you're like woody the steroid window's kind of closed on you no man this is when you want it like you know how old are you 24 ish Mm -hmm. you don't need steroids that's ridiculous the the steroid window has not yet opened for you (laughs) to i I have so testosterone levels generally peak uh during adolescence and early adulthood as you get older your testosterone levels gradually decline Typically about one percent a year after the age third after age thirty or forty. Woody, Woody could be down ten percent right now. They'll hook you up, Woody. Yeah, yeah. And, and and sometimes I look at the changes in my body, right? Like now I'm I'm headed in the right direction now, naturally, obviously. But um like you know, if I have a shirt that's too tight, especially like a month and a half ago, I'm like, ah, oh, it's kind of a bitch tits thing going on there. Bitch tits is also a low T side effect. And um you know, like I like, fuck. Maybe the you know, maybe maybe get some high tea. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk to Doctor White about this. Get this all sorted out. I we'll be pumping Dr. iron. White. I, Wait, you you haven't entered the. If Woody says I'm too young for this. I think you are too, Kyle. You're still in your twenties. No, 20s. fuck all that. No, I'm gonna go talk to this guy. I'm gonna go see what I can do. I I, I want to do it legally under the uh, the trained eye of a physician. But I think it like I think it's a good idea, and I don't want to go like crazy with it. But I think a little bit, you know, give me a little bit. It'll motivate me to work out if nothing else. And it seems like, I mean, that guy who was pr- probably on a huge dose, his gains in a year were like a lifetime's worth of working out. It was extraordinary. Like I, I can, I would like to see like what's, what would it be like if you if you were on these steroids for for six weeks or or, or, or two months or something like that, working out five days a week. It seems like it would be a life-changing amount of mass and muscle you're throwing on. Looks like a good idea to me. Hey, I have a, a Patreon question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, Patreon, by the way, if you guys don't know, uh, there's a level. I forget where it is. You can check out the page. There'll be a link in the description and the annotation on the screen. Where you can ask us questions every month. So we're going to go through and answer some of those. But this one's fun to me. I'm a 21-year-old guy, and I've been having sex regularly for a year and a half. The following emotional side is all there, crazy feelings, but it still feels like I'm shit at actual sex and have no clue what I'm doing half the time. When did you guys start thinking you were good at sex, in quotes, and what is the best way to keep getting better? When did you think you were good at sex? I, I like Sometimes they ask questions like, I, I feel like yeah. sex is one of the things that I am good at, and, and I don't know. I really feel like from the beginning, I was doing a pretty good job. I feel like I've always been successful at making the other person uh, come. Um, I, I've, I've never really had any issues lasting as long as I want. Um, it's happened a couple times, definitely. Like, like There's been some scenarios where I was with uh, girls for the first time and maybe was a super hot chick. and yeah, uh, a little overzealous. Absolutely. That's definitely happened before. But as far as like knowing what I was doing, I feel like I just watched enough porn or, or something that like I had a, and maybe I've got some rhythm anyway, just naturally. Like like I figured it out, and I feel like I've always been good at it. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I got a little <laughs> rhythm. That's how I, Yeah, yeah, I got a little rhythm. You know, whatever. Um, I feel like I feel like if you don't have any rhythm, maybe sex would be hard. Maybe if you're if you're a good dancer, you're probably good at sex. Look at Woody over there, fucking award winner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a medal for tearing it up. Um, but but yeah. I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. I guess if you're having uh, the better question is how to imp- what, what are you doing wrong and how to improve that. Um, I feel like porn is just a great guide if you're a dude on on on, on a lot of things. Um, maybe not that whole Jack can't. Maybe some, not some of the ridiculous yeah, stuff. I feel it like, depends on the porn <laughs> you're watching. If you don't know what you're doing. How do you know which is ridiculous and which is just a great technique? Ah. <sighs> I'll I'll take as a general rule of thumb, if it looks rough, 
it's probably not good. It's probably yeah. just for the camera. If, if it's a particularly rough pounding, you'll find that most women, I suspect, don't respond well to that. If mm -hmm. it's a particular <laughs> rough fingering, then you'll find most women, that's not what they're going for. How about this? How about some tips? How about some little tidbits that we've picked up that may help him along the way? Because I'm not going to be, I'm going to, well, you want to well, twist your nipple a little and you want to let your left hand run down her rib cage to her buttocks and squeeze it firmly while you insert your, no. But, but Rump maybe. Rump is bad, caress is good. Little things like, I don't know, trim your fingernails. That, that's one. Unlike Wings of Redemption may like to go in oh. but with his talons. It's and, the and, werewolf and, technique. Yeah, but personally, I feel like you want them as short as you can possibly get them without having some sort of biological issue. That, yeah, if you can you get don't them. know if it's good or not. Yeah. It's actually yeah. inside of your mouth. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Because you're going to be jamming those things inside of her vagina. And especially if you're new at this, where the vagina is located where, <laughs> and the directionality <laughs> of, of the canal may be a bit surprising for you. First of all, it's a lot lower than you might think it, it, it is if you're new to sex. And second of all, it, it goes kind of in a back and upward kind of motion. There's a bit of a hook involved there. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, mm -hmm. there's, there's some stuff to be, to be learned there about, about doing that. While and we're doing sex tips, um, if you look at the vagina, towards the very tippy top is the clitoris. Under that, urethra, not a pleasure zone. Underneath that, the actual vagina. That's where the canal is. I didn't know at the very first that the clitoris was the top part. Well, you grew up in a different time part. of that. Yeah, maybe I had less access to digital porn. But I didn't know where the clitoris was at the tippy top uh, at first. And um, the G-spot, inside and up a little bit, you can kind of make the come hither uh, sign to find that. And it feels a bit like a squishy wet walnut. So here's what you want to do. Anyone out there who has a female close by that you can manipulate. So you want to take your left hand, you want to place it right on top, right above the pubic hair, really. And push down a little. And you want to put, like, two fingers in with, you know, facing up like this, like that's her belly button. And you want to try to rub the, the, uh, the inside of her belly button. You're just kind of, like, like, like doing one of these, the come hither, like right on that spot. That's all you got to know. Maybe this get your thumb really up there. This new ground. That's Maybe like... You'd be standard. So, I feel like we're talk. I feel like we're talking to people who don't know the standard maneuver. Oh, yeah. Well, I, this guy seems to, right? He's so, having a hard time. It feels like I'm shit at actual sex and have no clue what I'm doing half the time. Yeah, oh. you want to get her. You want to get her. Her ninety percent of the way there with your hands and your mouth, and then it doesn't matter if you're good with everything else. Then you can just like go crazy and fuck her like you're retarded, and then you'll be. You're only. You're only you're well, ten percent do more. that. <laughs> yeah, like you're retarded. Just go crazy with it. Um, I, I don't know, dude. I, I don't know about... Um, um, I'm trying to I, we need to see you have sex. Uh, could, <laughs> that's, you that's send the in only way a to video know. <laughs> of your technique, um, it, get, get her to hold the camera, I guess. Or I could come. I got a lot of camera equipment. I would mic you up, get the lighting and everything. We'll I do this right. I feel like I'm in an awkward position. Make this a whole because production. While I, I, and we've talked about this once before. While I think I'm very good at sex with Jackie... I haven't had so many partners that I know that I'm like some sort of sex machine, right? If, if, if there was some reason to be a new partner, I might be like, oh, wait, shit. Like, you don't like X, Y, Z? You know, that was like my go-to move. <laughs> like, it was always a surefire hit. And, um, uh, um, yeah, you just stop there. You're good. No, no, I was yeah. going <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, I'll just stop right there. <laughs> Thank you.